Hey folks, here we are at the start of the Women's Tour of France to check out all of the bike tech, in particular the bike GPS computers, the power meters, and kind of whatever else I see along the way that looks pretty interesting. Now this is the Women's Tour de France, or technically the Tour de France Femme avec Zwift, uh, and it's basically the first Women's Tour de France that we've had in a long, long time. Uh, and you can see here is the team area. We're going to dive right into that. Now once I cross this little line right there, i got to throw my mask for the safety of the riders, but my microphone should pick up things just fine. With that, let's get head inside. I want to make sure with you, sure. my brother actually watches your video. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one, bye. Getting a couple quick pictures there with folks. Let's head on in and check things out. Now, roughly speaking, the way this video is going to work is the first half is going to be probably around power meters, trainers, and, uh, you know, cranks that stuff like that. And the second half around head units, mostly because they wait until closer to ride time to put the bike computers on. Okay, first up, we got team human powered. You can see down the bottom there, the uh, SRAM access setup, full power meters on all these bikes. Something that's definitely notable. I think, you know, I've been covering the women's teams for a number of years, and generally speaking, uh, the sponsorship of the women's team has been lacking from a tech standpoint so it'll be interesting to see over the course of walking up this avenue with these 25 24 teams uh exactly how coordinated that is and that's simply because companies haven't been willing to sponsor things and and now they are that's awesome so okay and if you're finding this video interesting or useful go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom it really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit uh, you can see here they have the rotor in spider there uh, also a rotor two in power or in power over there so they do have power meters on all these bikes, which is great. If we look at the spare bikes, I can see most of them also have power meters on it as well. Uh, so again, up here on the spares, you can see the rotor in spider up there, in spider on this one as well. Uh, so that is great to see. Great to see the spares. One thing that we usually see on the men's side is that not all the spares do have power meters on them. Uh, because of, of course the fact that you know it's just in case of a crash or whatnot so it's cool to see the spares here at least the first two teams do have the uh, power meters on them team running dura a shimano r9100 uh, you can tell the difference between the r9100 and the 9200 based on the pods so the pod is up there 9100 and 9200 it's right there uh, you can see they've got the magnet glued on there running tax near two t's for their warm-ups uh, i'm not be interested to see if teams are doing warm-ups today it's a two-hour race some will do them, but I suspect most will probably not. Looking through this, and every single one of them has the 9100 uh, on it from Shimano inside the back of their uh, mechanics van. Here you can see all the wheel sets piled up there. They've also got plenty of wheel sets sticking out here as well on the side of the van. Uh, these are definitely smaller vehicles than you see on the men's side. You got a spare frame there. Uh, but again, it's the sponsorship money. That's what makes this entire thing work, both the men and the women's side. Uh, and so on the men's side, there's just, you know, way more money, unfortunately, at this point. But hopefully that'll change over the next few years. Okay, we got Team Canyon SRAM here. Certainly we will see the SRAM access power meters. There we go, right there on there with the time pedals and acquisition by SRAM. Uh, and then up top here, looks like we got Garmin mounts. Or what is lucky some garments you know generally speaking uh riders put on their own head units their own bike gps's and it's still about two hours hour and a half or so to the start so you're not lucky to see those gps units out yet we'll sweep back later on and get them once the riders kind of get out to their bike get team fdj here running the shimano uh dur ace 9200 piece so the newer shimano version that just came out well it just came out a year ago i guess now but uh in terms of availability has been pretty limited up until now uh, so first team we're seeing on the 9200 we'll see how many teams they have you can see they've got their elite suito dash t's out there hanging out in back so now we got lacole which is the wahoo sponsor team and notable the very first world tour team to be using the wahoo power link power meters dual side of there's that side there you can see the pod on the other side there this is the pod piece of the power meters uh, again there's no men's teams using uh power meter pedals and that's for mostly sponsorship reasons less so technical because again everything here is sponsored to some degree uh, so in this case wahoo is your sponsor and they are running that which is pretty awesome uh, from a head unit standpoint i suspect they'll be on the wahoo bolts uh, you'll notice that the, most of the riders do have uh, this basically sticker that shows them this stage. In the case of today, it's a pretty straightforward stage. It just loops around the Sans Lise. Uh, this one here decided to go with their own home-built sticker, uh, which is actually somewhat common. Some of the riders prefer just more minimal information on it. Some prefer nothing at all. So you can see also at Lacole, they have their Wahoo kickers all stickerized up. Again, Wahoo's done a really good job this year of working with the teams, both the men's and the women's teams, to really like accessorize things. I'm interested to see if they've got a spectral sticker scheme on their head units like the men do. Uh, so kudos to Wahoo for like going that extra mile there. Hey, how you doing? Right. Yep. My name's Ken. I've seen the A's on for Wahoo. Ah, I just was talking about you. So, <laughs> so that's I'm awesome. The guy that comes over here and puts the stickers on. You're the. Oh, okay. Um, 
So no less than, what, 15 seconds after I was just talking about this, I found the sticker guy. I just found, you are the guy that apparently puts the stickers on all the trainers. Putting stickers on the trainers. You are, that is, that is awesome. Do the women also have any stickers on the head units? They do have white logos instead of the gray logos. Okay, notable. What we're hoping for mm -hmm. is that in the next days, we'll have yellow and green and maybe white with red polka dot bolts. Nice, I, I saw those on the men's side, uh, so that'd be cool. I, I'm still impressed though, and that's how you got the power meter, the pedals on there as well. So is this the only Wahoo team, or only team with the power meter pedals here today? Correct. Cool, well, I appreciate it. I'm gonna keep on looking for, I'm gonna look for more stickers over the rest of the week. Have a great day. Yep, thanks. Okay, we've got team education first here, popping up a Wahoo sponsor team. And just like the men, they've got all the stuff labeled. You can see the Wahoo cookers back there have the stickers on that we were just talking about. Uh, also, they have the official World Tour washing machine. I mean, this is not any washing machine. This is a Mealy World Tour with official branding on it that it's ready to roll. Now you'll notice that while this is a Wahoo sponsor team but for their trainers and their head units because they have the uh, small boat uh, mounts up there, it is a four eyes sponsor team for their power meter. So I can see the left side there. So only one side on the four eyes power meters. They only have a few different uh, models. They support dual sided on and perhaps with the uh, crank set here, there's not one of the supported ones, but notable to see that. And they've got their own stickers that they've done up there with the kilometers, the feed zones, the sprints, etc. Check out running the SRAM access power meters. It looks like a Garmin head unit. So a Team DSM running a Shimano R9200 power meters, along with, as you see down there, the Elite Suido T trainers. Okay, so we got Kofi just here running SRM power meters across the board. Different variants for different bikes, but they're all, all SRM. Uh, only, I think, one bike is in a different uh, particular group set. And then we have the Doretto XRs from Elite for the smart trainers. So this is the Tax Boost trainer. It's pretty much the lowest end trainer that Tax makes these days. And then from a crank set standpoint, they're running uh, the SRAM access power meters on all their bikes, including all their spares, which is consistent with what I've seen for all of SRAM sponsor teams. Team Trek, a SRAM sponsor team, and you can see that access power meter there on all these bikes, uh, both the World Championship bike here, of uh, Elisa Balsamo, as well as all the other bikes. Oh, my favorite biscuit maker. Okay, I got stages power in the back there. You can see it right there in the stages power meter. Left side only by the looks of it. Uh, you can see there's a Dura Ace over there. This is a Dura Ace with different rings on the back side. Any power meter? Nope, just uh, left side only. Here we are at Team at Yumbo Visma. Uh, let's see, what do they got? It's a Shimano R9100 at P. Again, based the bump on the bottom right there, and you can see the bump on the back side there for the power meter. And then as we pop over here to the trainers, uh, the tax boost again. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna see if I can get some details. You guys chose the tax boost trainers, or is that just what was given to you from a sponsorship standpoint? In other words, like for the men, they have the tax and the EOs, um, but for the women... Uh, they're lighter, they're lighter. Uh... Just lighter. So there you go. As I mentioned earlier, just simply logistics. It is a lighter trainer. Uh, easier to deal with uh, out on the road. There's Movistar, but I don't see Movistar's other gear. But since we're here, uh, you can see it as a SRAM access team. It's right there, SRAM access on the power meters. I think probably the biggest shift that I've seen in the women's teams isn't necessarily the sponsorship of all the gear, which of course is big, but just the actual team vans. The team buses are proper buses. Uh, if I look at other events that had the women's pro teams, uh, they didn't have the sponsorship money to be able to pull off entire team buses like these massive team buses that you see right there. Ladies here are having such a blast. And you see this with the men as well, right? It's not just the ladies having fun, the men have fun. Everyone here at the start of the tour, it's such a, a huge moment for them uh, to have this full first full week here. Uh, it's gonna be hopefully the start of a, a many more years of this. Okay, we got Team Sarah Tizit here. Uh, they are running FSA power boxes. Look at this custom crank there. That's pretty sweet there. That's awesome. Uh, and they are on Wahoo Kickers. You can see a Wahoo sponsored team uh, with the Wahoo Headwind fans, though I will have to say, there are no Wahoo stickers. My sticker man from earlier, where, where's his team stickers? Uh, hopefully they're, they're getting that sorted though. So maybe by the end of the week, we'll see some stickers on those trainers. I can't see who yet is at the bottom of the hill here. <laughs> this is the worst location. I see NXTG and another team that's stuck at the bottom of this little hill. So every time they wanna go anywhere, they have to go up this steep little incline. This is probably like seven, eight, no, it's steeper than 8%. It's probably like 10% or so uh, to get up to the rest of the team area. Sometimes you just draw the short straw, it's as simple as that. Well, look at that. It's our first Garmin power meter pedal team, uh, team NXTG here, running what looks like the Garmin uh, Rally or Vector. I can't see, it looks like Rally because I don't see the Vector uh, branding on the bottom there. So the Rally is more etched in in the bottom. A lot of people often ask why more World Tour teams aren't using pedal-based power meters. Uh, and we've seen our two here today with the Wahoo team and now the Garmin team, uh, both our sponsor teams, both having them. Uh, on the men's side, again, it's really as simple as that sponsorship angle on the drivetrain from Shimano and SRAM. They just want that entire thing. 
So in this case, they have a Garmin sponsorship and they probably don't have a drivetrain sponsorship. In no more than seconds after I finished talking about pedal-based power meters, we have a Vero Asiomo down here, yep, on a team, uh, UAE team. And you can see this on all the units. So pretty cool to see it's a Vero there. At this point, we've got pretty much all of the current power meter pedals in the market. Uh, we don't have the SRM one. So SRM does have power meter pedals, but they sponsor some teams on the crank set standpoint, uh, but nothing yet from a pedal perspective. And now I have to do the hill back up to the uh, main area. Uh, you can see Team Education First, one of the riders using the Wahoo Roam. So not a Bolt, a Roam uh, with that uh, sticker set up on the edge of it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, yeah. Okay, so you can see personal preference here on the head units. They all have a sticker scheme. This is the Wahoo Roam over here, and that is the Wahoo Bolt V2. Uh, but again, the, the riders can really choose which particular ones they want. Down the bottom, we've got a four-eyes power meter. Uh, note, by the way, the matching stem colors. Like, come on. That's insane. This uh, Team Education First, I've said it in other videos, they go the mile on all this little stuff that you might not even notice. I didn't even notice that till today, despite seeing the men's teams for many, many days. Getting warm out here, by the way. I've got my sunscreen. I could only find the bronzing sunscreen option at the grocery store this morning. Uh, but uh, current sweatiness check is high. Team SD works here with the SRAM access power meters on them. It uh, looks like a Garmin sponsored team. They're getting their uh, basically tracking units installed on them right now. So just finishing that up, every single cyclist, uh, every single rider has a tracking unit on the back of it. So the race organizers can keep track of it. The riders are doing basically a presentation at the top. So the team's getting ready to go up there right now. This is the fancy VIP zone, by the way, where all the fancy people hang out. That's actually a Zwift tent right there, in fact. Uh, Zwift is the title sponsor of this particular event, but these are all mostly different sponsor booth areas. You can see FHA, Skoda, Lactair, LCL, etc., all the way down this list. And if you get up closer to the starting area, you can see the riders up on top there. That's uh, a pretty awesome shot with the Eiffel Tower in the background. The riders up on the stage, like it doesn't really get more epic now. And then once they're done on the stage, then they pop over here into the press team area where they can do interviews over here, get ready to roll, see all the press lined up there for interview areas. You can see down there one of the VLON GoPro sessions below her handlebars. Uh, VLON is kind of responsible for all of the uh, like teams. It's a complicated organizational thing, but basically it's it's owned effectively by the teams. And uh, essentially in this case, they've uh, got cameras on different riders throughout the day. That's number 15 camera. They've also got riders, the men as well out there that you see every single day going out. And Simberi and Voss there running the Edge 130 Plus, so a smaller bike computer. Part of the rest of the team on the larger Edge 830s and I think I have 530 there as well. So some of the teams are starting the warm up as you just saw right there. Here's Arkea also starting their warm ups. Looks like about a half an hour or so until the race starts. It is a neutral start for the first 5K, which basically means that uh, it's not racing, it's just kind of hanging out until you get to what is essentially the finish banner on the other side, the base of Champs Elysees, uh, and that's when the racing will begin. The Grand Defy on the Tour de France fam. This is the GCN show. Awesome, doing the intro for the GCN show right there. Uh, again, everyone just having fun. This is such a good day out here. Uh, super nice weather, a super nice venue. Starting to warm up on those Elite Sweet OTs. You can see they've got Garmin head units. Uh, also a Wahoo head unit as well in there. So they may not be sponsored by a head unit team, but getting that warm up going nonetheless. I uh, got one rider on rollers. The rest are on the pack of boost trainers. You see they do have the cooling vests on. So each of them has a cooling vest on. Kind of keep cool out here while they get warmed up, which I know seems counterintuitive, but you want to warm up the legs, warm up the body without overheating. How long is the warm up going to be? 25? Okay, cool. Is it longer usually for your, like a longer TT stage? Would it be longer or? Yeah, then I would be longer. Longer, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, good luck today. Movie we'll start going down with those Edge A30s and Edge 1040 Solar, another Edge A30 there. Swing it on down. So again, rider choice is kind of the theme that we see across most of the teams, as long as they're within, within the, uh, the brand that they've been sponsored by. Here we are with St. Miquel and rolling up on those uh, tax, sorry, not tax, elite trainers. Uh, nothing smart, but it's all good. Good on the list down here to Kofidis. All of them are on the Giretto XRs. Getting fully warmed up here. Keep on chugging down the hill. We case on those feedback sports rollers. There's nothing smart about those rollers, which is fine. They work just fine here. See the whole team. 
They have their Wahoo head units on there. Getting those cooling vests out. So at this point, those are the inside liners for those vests. And they'll pop them on in just a second here. Okay, you can see Team LaCole is starting to get warm. They're actually well into the warm at this point. Uh, again, certain teams are warming up, certain teams other aren't. It just depends on kind of what the particular team, uh, you know, trainers and the protocol calls for. So these team mechanic cars, team cars starting to get down into their places here ahead of the start. The Emblem Visma here moved from their side of the street to over to the cool side of the street. The Emblem Visma, a Garmin sponsored team. You can see all of them have the Edge A30s on there. All six of them, they're running those tax boost trainers. Oh, hold on. That's right, Marion Voss. And uh, at number 43 over there, they're both running the Edge 130 Plus. So those smaller units that we talked about earlier, or maybe I cut it up by now, who knows really. Going on the list here. Uh, St. McKella is running, let's see, stages on some of them, stages on others, so this must be a stages sponsor team. So again, look like that stages M200 units on the front there, smaller head unit, very similar size, like an Edge by 30 or Wahoo Bolt. Uh, this came out a few months ago. We've got Trek right here, this is a Wahoo team, you can see the blue Wahoo dot there. In this case, running the Wahoo Roam on this unit, uh, and then the Bolt V2 over there. So again, the preferences as to what each individual rider wants. Here is the Roam. And then over here, you got that Wahoo Bolt V2 on that one right there. Here at Team Bike Exchange, let's see, anyone got their head units out yet? Not quite yet. Do you know what bike computers they're running? Giant. Giant, okay, cool, Giant, cool. Yep, the other Giant sponsor team there with the uh, Giant Stages combo dish ones. Just they're the exact same unit, depends on whether you buy the Giant branding or the uh, Stages branding. So here at Live Racing, you can see there, those Giant or Stages dash M200s there, uh, Garmin over there. A 1040 solar way over there and a giant over there so got quite the blend of units today here at live racing uh, in some cases there's teams that may not have sponsorships that take an effect yet uh, this will be one of those cases cooling off in the shade right there keeping cool that is the name of the game today and across the way here another wahoo sponsor team and they've got the wahoo bolt v2 on most of them also notable, they have the Wahoo Headwind fan down there with those Wahoo kickers. Speaking of things I found out here, I have Mr. GP Lama, Shane Miller. What is your, what's your surprise today? What's your one thing that you've seen today that you're like, what? Uh, the budgets behind these teams are a lot better than what they have been in previous years or for previous women's tours that I've been to. That I'd have to be on par with the men's for the equipment wise. Um, I've been looking at the tire technology today. Very yep. interesting, especially this, this road surface here is quite smooth. The Champs Elysees is absolutely terrible. Well, it's, it's rough, we all know that. Um, so I'd be going for a 30 mil tire today or a 28. Um, I've seen some 25s. Huh? Very interesting, but I mean, tire tech has come a long way. But uh, no, it's just the equipment. It, it's just really stepped up and also the support now. Cool. Well, we're gonna keep on rolling and uh, last couple teams to check out. Oh, we got the group photo going on down here. Group photo time. I'll get it too, I'm gonna steal it. I'm gonna steal a group photo. We Boom. Jack the, uh, team, team so you can see the vehicles heading on down again to the starting area, getting ready to roll here. You can hear the helicopter up there somewhere, uh, starting to circle. So that's kind of the, the time. That's like the, the warning sound uh, that, you know, like the opera has the chimes or the lights or whatever. And here they've got the helicopter letting you know. So I'm going to try to wander my way through the front of the start. Eiffel Tower behind it. I mean, this is just amazing, amazing location for the start here. Oh, there we go. The starting banner getting out there. Ils sont en train de s'exceder le ruban de passer au travers et c'est chose que le ruban qui a été. La Marseillaise, mesdames et messieurs, à deux minutes du top départ, donc de cette toute première étape de la première édition du Tour de France. Okay, at this point, the women's teams are off. They got the 5K neutralized start just to kind of an easy, chill ride, enjoying the moment of the city, enjoying the moment as this, this whole moment. And then, uh, hello, just saying hi. All good? Ciao, ciao. Ciao. <laughs> you can see the team cars all zipping out now on the race. So now that things have calmed down a little bit, let me just throw on the screen all of the power meters I saw, followed here in a second by all of the bike computers and then followed by all of the uh, trainers that were applicable. Not all the teams had trainers out there, so I don't have all the teams in this case. Okay, so there you go. We complete a look at the Tour de France, a tech for the women. Hopefully you found it interesting. If so, give it a like at the bottom or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.